Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we are exploring the beautiful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England, following in the trail of Herbert Evans, who cycled around this region and wrote about his experiences in this wonderful book, The Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, published in 1905, 114 years ago. Widget and I today are on the edge of Edge Hill. This extraordinary steep slope is the site of the first major pitched battle in the Civil War. War had been declared for some time before this battle, uh, but the two armies had yet to meet. They were marching towards one another, the Royalists from Warwick towards London, and Essex, in charge of the Parliamentarian Army, moving to intercept him. It's really difficult to imagine this in our modern day and age when communications are so good, but they really didn't know where they were or where each of their opponent was. And it wasn't until the two quartermasters for these two armies, searching for billets and food in the villages behind me here, bumped into one another and with much consternation realized that the two armies must be very, very close. They raced back to their respective bosses and warned them that a battle was imminent. The Royalists gathered on the top of this ridge where there were no trees in those days, so it was a bare hill and the parliamentarians in the valley below. Not surprisingly, the parliamentarians had no wish to try and attack the Royalist army up this incredibly steep slope, and so it would have been a stalemate. It's possible Charles could have headed for London at that moment but he decided not to because he was feared that he might arrive in London with a hostile reception and the army at his back. So he felt a, a confrontation was inevitable. He moved his soldiers off the hill, down into the valley, and they lined up on the 23rd of October for the first pitch battle of the war. So here we are, we're standing on the ridge, on the side of the ridge here of Edge Hill, uh, with the hill behind us, looking out over this extraordinary valley. And right here is the church, uh, church farm. You can see the church about seven or eight hundred yards in that direction. And then beyond that, in the flat fields of this extraordinary valley we're looking out over, is where the armies drew up in front of one another to, for their battle. It must have been the most extraordinary sight and noise. Nearly 12,000 men on each side, a lot of artillery, pikes and swordsmanship. It must have been the most remarkable sight for those people standing on this ridge. The battle started at 3.30 in the afternoon on Sunday the 23rd of October 1642. Neither army was particularly experienced, so it took them some hours to get themselves ready for conflict. The Parliamentarian army numbered around 12,500 and the Royalists a few hundred more, and the King, dressed in black velvet lined with ermine, rode through the ranks of his army, encouraging them to give of their best. His nephew, Prince Rupert, was in command of his cavalry and was to play a key part in the battle which started with a huge bombardment, fairly ineffectually, but very frightening. Then Rupert's cavalry charged across the valley to engage his parliamentarian opposite numbers, scattering them and causing them to flee. At this stage, it would have been sensible for him to return to the battlefield to support the rest of the Royalist army, and if he had done so, it's quite possible that the day would have been won and the whole history of England would have been very different. Instead, Rupert followed the fleeing parliamentarians, came across their baggage train, and decided to allow his men to loot and plunder. And by the time he returned, the battle had swung in the parliamentarians' favour. Whilst his later contribution did make the battle end in a draw, it deprived the king of victory. In the morning, Exhausted by their efforts the previous day, 
Both armies retired from the battlefield. The king to Banbury, where he was to capture the castle and create a lasting stronghold, and the Earl of Essex to London, where he set up defences which made it impossible for the king ever to capture the capital. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our brief description of the Battle of Edge Hill. We've really enjoyed our it's been It is extraordinary how spooky it is. It has a reputation, this place, for people seeing the ghosts of the armies and hearing the noise of battle long, long, long after they were all dead. I'm not surprised. It is very atmospheric. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and next week we'll be driving into the Cotswolds proper and visiting the village of Brails and on to the Cotswolds distillery in Starton. <laughs>